good. Despite what we did to them last week, our new team captains are back, so please welcome David Seaman and Phil Tufnell. Absolutely ruined it for me now, yeah. <laughs> With David and Rory is a former Premiership footballer and legendary hard man who is about to start an acting career in films. Let's hope that no one tells him to break a leg. <laughs> Neil Ruddock. With Phil and Jonathan is a 400 metres medalist whose athlete ex-boyfriend decided to propose to her at the Sydney Olympics. But typically he was beaten to it by two Americans and a Kenyan. <laughs> Catherine Merry! We kick off with a footballing excuse. David, Rory and Neil have a look at this. Here's Manchester United on their travels, putting Charlton Athletic to the sword, as they invariably do. But David's team, in time-honoured Man United fashion, when they came a cropper at Southampton the other week, it wasn't their fault. So why exactly was it not mm. their fault? Before we answer that question, Nick, can I just say yeah. that on Friday last week, it was David Seaman's 40th birthday. Well, <laughs> So you're now as up, nearly as old as your hairstyle, David. <laughs> Says one of the stylistics. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no nice surprise and say, oh, shut your eyes, David, and hold your hands out. Well, that's what you do at work, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I had a great time. Had a good weekend, yeah. didn't you? Another clean sheet. Yeah. Apart from, that, apart from those two goals. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm afraid one of them was gift wrapped, weren't it? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Don't see, but there you go. But so you're living in Manchester and you're old. But look on the bright side, Harold Shipman's in jail. <laughs> Have you ever ever Don't start on me? <laughs> Why are you called Razor? How did that come? I was uh, named after boxer. Oh, you are a boxer, aren't you? Yes. They were trying to wind me up when they saying you're football, but I know you're a boxer. <laughs> I'm a boxer. <laughs> From yeah, every way. Let's face it, a big fat bloke like you couldn't be a football. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ruddick. Yeah. Um, did you see the Arsenal Manchester United yes, match of the weekend? Yes. Now, what do you make of, really, the, 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 the thing that went on there, was it not shocking? Was it not disgusting? I mean, I watched it with my children and I was upset. 75 bloody minutes of football before they got to the comedy. What are they thinking? <laughs> but you were there, weren't you? I was. I was up. I, I found myself in the, in the Man United end. But you're an Arsenal fan, aren't you? I am an Arsenal fan and I've found myself in a few strange places lately. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and this is my mate's sofa at the moment. <laughs> But, uh, as you say, it, yeah, thanks, so You've just split up with your boyfriend, haven't you? <laughs> so, Man United versus Southampton. <laughs> it's something to do with um, Beckham's marriage is splitting up, isn't it? Which is it's rather frightening for all of us. She might be single soon. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't worry too much, Rory. <laughs> what was it was saying, Nick? Uh, I think Phil Neville was the one who was actually quoting. Is it the feeble excuse of that the pitch was too dry? Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> was that so hard? <laughs> yes, according to defender Phil Neville, the playing surface was to blame. He said, the pitch was very dry, it slowed the ball down a lot. And it isn't just Southampton who've beaten Manchester United recently, of course. No less a team than the mighty Stoke City thumped them 3-1 in a pre-season friendly. And of course, wouldn't you know it, it wasn't their fault that time either. <laughs> According to Sir Alex Ferguson, the grass was too long. Of course, the Old Trafford pitch is perfect for Man United. Not too dry, grass not too long, and with a bump just inside the penalty area for Diego Forlan to trip over in the 89th minute. <laughs> Manchester United's Phil Neville recently became a dad. He's overjoyed at the birth of his son, even though it now means that he's the third best footballer in his family. 
<laughs> Phil, Jonathan and Catherine, it's a handbags question for you. Here's British distance running legend David Bedford smashing the world 10,000 metres record back in 1973. And here are global communication giants in Fonks bringing information to the world. But why the bad feeling between the two, Phil's team? Just as well Lisbeth Christie didn't wear those shorts when he was running, didn't he? Well, <laughs> you mentioned Lisbeth, let's, let's, let's welcome Catherine to the show yeah. properly, because coincidentally, I believe you are, you are coached by Mr Christie, are you not? I am, yeah, luckily, yeah. The, 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 the lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you had a peep in that? In Lisbeth's lunchbox? Yeah. No, no, I've never eaten. No, I know, no. <laughs> I'm very upset. <laughs> Why? You know I'm a tennis fan. Yeah. Have you not been following the tennis at oh, Davis Cup? Oh, yeah. It's fantastic been results. Yeah. I didn't even know it was tennis first of all. I read in the papers, tune in to see Tim Henman and Greg Zetsky in Casablanca. I thought, that's a remake I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so upset. I'm going to give it up. I've taken up a new sport. I've started on a bit of golf. I tell you, it's bloody hard. Have you tried it? No. You've just got a little stick thing with a a knob on the end, one little ball, and you've got to hit a, re a target a long way away, and I was aiming for a magician in a Perspex box, but I couldn't get him. <laughs> he was actually he shouldn't beat himself up, because um, Phil was telling me, he said, you know, it's hard it looks, because apparently you were knocked out over the weekend by some strong black Moroccan, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> David Bedford. Yeah. David now he was a he was a longer distance runner, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's a very good Five and ten thousand, yeah. right? Yeah. And what a fine moustache. That, <laughs> it was, was, it was, that was a man's moustache, not like that thing that old Lou Lucan's got over there. <laughs> Speaking of running, as we are, uh, congratulations are in order. Did you hear about this? At the weekend, oh, yes. Mr. McGrath completed what was it, the great North 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 did? Congratulations. Thank you, mate. And this was presumably and it's 13 miles, isn't it? It's a half 13 hour. miles, 192.5 yards. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. It's great there, actually great there. I, got I, was, there. Didn't, I didn't run very fast, I must say, Ken, to be honest. How long did it take you got you beaten by that deep sea diver bloke, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I know I was supposed to be interviewed by Sue Barker, but no, she didn't show. She'd gone home by then. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you, mate? Uh, just, just <laughs> over two hours, 25 minutes. Yeah. Oh. That's not bad, is it? That's Good. not bad for a fact. Well, it's in, in, in Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, actually, ever seen one of those, eh? Hey, you don't recognise that colour, do you? Hey? <laughs> Silver, that is. <laughs> so, an answer to this question. 118, it's got to be something to do with that. That's the company to do with phones, isn't it? <laughs> it's to do with the new building yes, yes. The cricket boys on tour like a little bit of phone sex. Do they? Yeah, I mean, you're away for a long time, apart from Mike Gatton, who uh, just phones Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> and gets him to read the toppings down the phone. <laughs> One one eight got to be something to do with the directory. He's probably said that must be me who faced the advert on. Maybe he didn't get the old doe me. Yeah. Yeah. The music it's history. correct for three yeah, points. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think that was a team effort. Yeah. We got there in the end. Yes, the reason is because David Bedford is convinced that the communications firm, who are one of the many offering a new director inquiry service, based their two hairy runners in their adverts on him, and that he is owed some cash. It would have been nice if someone had come and said, here's £100,000 for being so good looking. <laughs> in Fonks claim that the runner is based on a contemporary of Bedford's, the even more good looking American athlete, Steve Prefontaine. And anyway, Bedford's not getting a penny. Bedford's not the only sports star to complain that a company is using their image. David here is about to fire off a letter to the makers of Pringles. <laughs> What is it they say, David? Once you drop, you just can't stop. <laughs> anyway, I thought you were going to be suing them, the size of you. I knew that the Omens weren't good for the British Athletics team when they unveiled their world championship mascot, Bad Luck Badger. <laughs> it was always going to be beaten by the American mascot, Drug Cheater. Right. And at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Phil's team have three points. Yes.
Round two seems the welcome return of the photo fit. Three sporting icons have been merged into one hideous combination, and all the teams have to do is tell us which bits are whose. David's team, here's your photo fit. Ooh. <laughs> Pat Butcher. <laughs> yes. Did Jimmy Savile ever have a love child with Rhonda Cameron? <laughs> yeah, I thought that sort of <laughs> agonised look, is not it? Is that me when I went to the doctors to have my poles shoved? <laughs> Tony Adams tasting the shandy. <laughs> <laughs> Middle one, the, um, Martin Johnson. Okay, Martin Johnson. that's Martin Johnson. Mm -hmm. right. Who's that barn? It's a bad barn. That's Owen Johnson. Owen had a bad barn. It's on this side of the house. Yeah, I think I know. Yeah, yeah you know. Dear he's, right. he's, um, he was in the paper the other day that he died and he got a lot of stick and died at back. So it's not someone who's... Geeks. Oh, Ryan Geeks. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, Ryan Geeks. Ryan he Giggs. died it, and he died okay. it. Okay, not your top one. You said Ryan Giggs. Around the mouth. I got no idea. Right. Who did it. You know, I did the Adams. Adams. Matthew <laughs> Pinson. Matthew Pinson. No. Let's see if you're right. It is, in fact, you were right. Ryan oh. Giggs, Martin Johnson, and Sean Pollock. Ryan Giggs got rid of the blonde hair after he was repeatedly chased into a nightclub toilet by Dwight York. <laughs> Six foot seven inch, 19 stone Martin Johnson's nickname is Muppet and will be taking the piss out of that just as soon as he's safely in Australia. <laughs> During the World Cup, pubs will open at five in the morning, enabling rugby fans to prepare for kickoff at two in the afternoon. <laughs> Sean Pollock is famously straight-laced and won't touch whiskey, beer or cigarettes, or as Phil calls it, breakfast. <laughs> right, Phil's team, here are your three. <laughs> Don't stop me. Good heavens! Oh my God. What have they done to my wife? <laughs> Oh, Mitchell, and he hasn't shaved his head in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Is that Phil? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> He's never well, seen I, it. I, I suppose you're always looking from the outside, aren't you? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> and the bit in the middle, is that the lead singer from the Communards? Oh, yeah. Jimmy Stromerville. Run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. <laughs> What's that? Right? Was it in the black and white minstrel? <laughs> Jonathan, just to keep you on board, if in doubt, it's going to be a sports person. Oh, yeah. Well, he might have played sport. Just because he's gay doesn't mean he can't play sport, you know. That's, you are so homophobic. <laughs> it's somebody who is predominantly famous for sport. Sport. Is it Miss Stoke, 2003? <laughs> sports person. She, just because she's a beauty queen doesn't mean she can't play sport. <laughs> We've got, we got Wayne Rooney in the middle. Right. Well, Who's the hair? Is it Ferdy Lundkamping, the way his name is? The Ferdy Lundberg. <laughs> Ferdy Lovechild. <laughs> Ferdy Lundberg. Ferdy Lundberg. Yeah. <laughs> it's not him. You're not great on the football, are you, sir? <laughs> or any sport at all. No, no. no. <laughs> He's slightly better than you, though, Phil. Yeah. yeah. I bet it's someone wearing a wig. Paul Gascoigne used to wear silly wigs. Yeah. Wig. wig is good. We know it's Wayne Rooney in the middle. The Listen, bottom half is... I don't know who that is. Right, I'll give you Wayne Rooney. I'm going to hand it across. It's a rugby player, that is, at the bottom. Yes, it's Ben Cohen. Look, it's Ben Cohen. Oh. Is that it? OK, let's yeah. see who it actually is. What we had there was the Ferrari rug oh. wig of Michael Schumacher, the cheeky chops of Wayne Rooney, and the ever stubble chin of Chelsea we billionaire know. Roman Abramovich. Oh, shorts. Michael Schumacher is said to be the third richest man in sport after Tiger Woods and Colin Montgomery's pastry chef. <laughs> Wayne Rooney went to the same comprehensive school as his Everton co-striker Francis Jeffers. In fact, the school's even named a library after them. The Rooney and Jeffers never came in here library. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have four points and David's team have five. Last Friday, as we said, David Seaman celebrated his 40th birthday, so well done to David, as we've already said. And, yeah. and as a special treat, David, your younger brother Collins brought you a cake. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now to our David Beckham challenge. Fingers on the buzzer. The first question answered correctly wins some bonus points, okay? So here is the first starter. 
when he's finished playing football and flogging fizzy drinks and second-hand cars, what is David Beckham's ambition? Joined up, joined up, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's gonna he's gonna finish that novel he started when he was seven. It's uh, Noddy and Big Ears, Big Day Out. <laughs> No, no, come on, anybody want to go to the moon? Go to the moon? Yeah, it's a correct oh, answer. Yeah. There you go. Here are your bonus questions, just for Phil's team. Oh. What was on the menu when the governor of Yunnan province in China threw a banquet in honour of Beckham and his Real Madrid teammates? You don't have you to. Don't have oh, to <laughs> well, he, can't, he loves getting a bus. <laughs> Got me smoking lino yesterday. Um, <laughs> monkey brains. Monkey brains, no. But they didn't eat anything, did they? Come on, it gets bugs, 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 bugs. Yeah, yeah. what sort of bugs? Locusts. Locusts. Uh, uh, grasshoppers. I'll give you a point for grasshopper, okay. The full menu was deep fried grasshopper, fried bamboo worm, a bowl of chicken fat, and glazed bees. And worst of all, tofu. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, name three beasts according to the papers that the Beckhams saw on their recent trip to a Madrid safari park. Oh, I know. Um, uh, scary. Ginger <laughs> and baby. Baboons, camels and ostriches, no point there. At a recent auction in China, David Beckham fan paid £210 for what? Toe nails. No. His shirt? No, close. His pants? No. His socks? His shoes? His shoes? He don't even his hat? With it not very his long. sheet? Hmm? His bed? His sheet? His, sheet. his, his pillow shirt. Shirt. Yes! Yes, I knew it all along. Well <laughs> He got it right by just saying every word he knew. Because I was, <laughs> I was toying with you like a cat with a fat mouse. <laughs> <laughs> they, they actually said it was still carrying Beckham's sweaty stench. Oh, yeah. Okay, fingers on buzzers again. Last chance. Are you ready? Why was Beckham less than happy with his top of the range Land Rover SUV? He couldn't spell SUV. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, no. Oh, you know? I, I know. Go no, on. He actually it? told me this. He said, Yeah, you name drop. <laughs> <laughs> and when you say he told me this, don't rub your breast up. <laughs> <laughs> That's frankly too much information. <laughs> your relationship might be close. We know when Posh is away, he has wants and needs. And from behind, you're a good looking woman. But that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that outside. <laughs> Come on, then, what's your answer? He actually said that the seats of his car actually made him feel as though he'd wet himself. It's the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, okay. no, he's, he's said oh, the seats. Seat. Here are your bonus bonus questions for bonus points. According to the Sun, how did Sir Alex Ferguson celebrate Beckham's transfer? He, he sang a song. Uh, he did. Alex Ferguson sang. Um, he went out for Danny Boy. He sang Danny Boy in the bar of his yeah, Swiss French that. hotel. Yes. David Beckham's father, Ted, yes. <laughs> has recently been employed by Barnet Football Club to do what? Play wide on the right. No. no. What did you say to Gasper? Oh, yeah. Yes, and he came yeah. to he service the boilers. Service the oven. <laughs> According to a survey by a financial services group, Virgin Money, where would most people like to see David Beckham's head? Have you ever fouled Beckham of you? Yeah. What's that like? Brilliant. <laughs> Great experience. Yeah. You know how he speaks like that? When you yeah. kick him and hurt him, he even goes, ah! Oh! Like a. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're hurting me! No. <laughs> when did he become a German? <laughs> <laughs> Where would they like to go back his head? I am um, um, paper money. Paper money? On ten pound notes. No. Last question. What is the problem with the Beckham's French chateau? According to the Beckham's, what's their problem? It's in France. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Chateau. He, he thought it was a hat. <laughs> no, it has no mobile phone signal. No, I knew that. You think I was only Paddy? That's twenty minutes. <laughs> You hit my friend Beckham. <laughs> oh, we'll have you. <laughs> At noon. I answer. didn't get signal for their mobile phones. I've done. Hey, just power. told you that. <laughs> it's like having two wives. <laughs> One of the friends said not being able to get a signal there is going to be a nightmare. Victoria could lose job opportunities if Steven Spielberg, <laughs> for example, is trying to get in touch with her. <laughs> but for the new E.T. film, presumably. <laughs> We love David Beckham, but I read a quote from him in the paper, an actual quote from the paper about two weeks ago. A uh, journalist asked him, said, do you think uh, that on the pitch you are a volatile player? And he said, yeah, because I could play on the left or the right. <laughs> <laughs> he actually said that. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have seven and David's team have nine.
time now for the teams to fumble the famous as we play Field the Sportsman. David and Rory, you're up first this week, if you'd like to take your positions. I'm saving the oh <laughs> 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 You were 40 about 20 years ago. That's better, Jonathan. <laughs> so, hey, why don't you put a pair of man's jeans on your birthday list? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from Top Shop, aren't they? Look at them. Hey, 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 your suit looks fantastic hey. in this. <laughs> <laughs> don't, okay. knock him, don't knock him, this is the blindfold he wore during the Brazil game, isn't it, David? <laughs> No, 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 no. He's the address to give it me. <laughs> OK, can we have our first mystery guest, please? Good luck, David. Good. Nobly ass, this bloke. Oh. <laughs> Hang on. What? Is it? Hang on. Turn side. Is it your old man? No. <laughs> What's happening, David? I just like feeling myself. It is. Where have we got time for that? Oh, no, that. How many? Have you got some over there? It's like a new job. Jesus. I thought you'd be after that job, David. You're going up football, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon, I reckon it, it's two Spanish women, isn't it? <laughs> well, hang on a minute. Oh, it's it's a, what are you talking about? Uh, oh, one over there. <laughs> hey, we, we, did, you, did you do the Great North Front? <laughs> oh, I know who this is. That's what Who is it? Bradford's son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not those th two lucky jobbing actors, is it? Who happened upon a <laughs> telephone <laughs> advert by any chance? Absolutely correct. For three points, well done. For one, one, eight, three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jonathan, Philip. Oh, right. last time I did this, I. Oh, well, I got. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Star, what are you talking about? <laughs> right, can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> Hi, what the What's that? Oh, oh, I just got struck by someone and I don't like it. Oh, oh, well, what's God. going on over there? <laughs> New Jackie Chan. <laughs> hey. It's not my first wife, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. to haunt me. <laughs> you better watch out wherever you are because I'm deadly. Oh, oh, hold on. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> Was it posh by? <laughs> posh by? I don't. I don't want to get hit again. No, no, it's not. What's that? Oh, no, it's not. It's Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> Is it? That's a boxing, boxing, uh... Blimey, he's got a hard, shiny head. It's Phil Mitchell. Well, there must be someone hey, here. Hey, what's that? What's it, will ya? You big, lazy galoot. Is it? Well, this is a boxer. Hello. <laughs> Hold on. Hello, sir. Is it David Seaman out here? <laughs> oh. Hey, it's a oh. lady. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it, lads. She said, you touch my tits, I'll knock you out. <laughs> You must By a have simple that matter of deduction, I believe it is Her Royal Highness the Queen. Yeah. Who said the same thing to me backstage at the Royal Variety Show 1987. That's definitely my first one. Is that a lady boxer? Well, oh, I like a lady boxer. Yeah. I might not look at Martin Keown? No. <laughs> it's, um. Really nice hair. Yeah. She's a tiddler, really. <laughs> What's a lady boxer we know? Uh, there's one called uh, Kathy Brown. Or it is indeed Kathy yeah. Brown. Yeah. 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 How did you know that? 
Because she's a boxer. How do you know her? Because I have a file of sexy lady sportsmen on my computer. Thought... <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Phil's team have 10 points and David's team have 12. We finished with the name game, but this week we're playing a new version called the tabloid name game. I read out the name of the sports star, and each team has to suggest how they've actually been described in the popular press. For example, if I said Boris Becker, you might respond tax-dodging, flame-haired, linen-covered enthusiast, or Arsene Wenger might be urbane, short-sighted, and non-apologetic. <laughs> All of which have been genuinely used by the tabloids. <laughs> So you've got to get three colourful descriptions, OK? Here's your first one. Here, your time starts now. Sir Alex Ferguson. Red, red nose and red, red nose. Red nose, I'll give you red nose rancer. One. Race horse, um, race horse molester. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> your time's running out, come on, okay. come on. Brooke on, desperate for a dumb speeding. Wait. Shit himself in a car, is he? He's red. Yeah. <laughs> speeding. Do you remember the next yeah, one? Yeah, bad foul mouth, gum okay. chewing, red nose ranter, uh, volatile, okay. intense teacup throwing. OK, okay. Phil Tufnell. Cat. Stoned. The cat. <laughs> Out. Spinner. Spinner. Definitely not spinner. No. Quicker. No. Nope. Are you telling me they've King never caught him a cricketer in the paper? It's got to be what's on here. King of the Jungle. King of the Jungle. King of the Jungle. We'll give you King of the Jungle. I'll give you the King of the Jungle. You could have had weather-beaten, proto-cockney, scruffy, mischievous, craggy, floppy fringe Tarzan. George Best. Piss. Piss. Um, no. Wasted talent. <laughs> Tragic wasted talent, I'll Liver. give you. Irish Twinkle. I'll give you Irish Twinkle, yeah. Marbella, just the liver waiter. Ibiza. <laughs> Holiday. <laughs> you're, not, you're, not, you're, not in, you're not in therapy now. <laughs> love right, you could have had booty love cheek. White. Chris you, Eubank. Arthole. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. Uh, got the time out. Looking pugilist with an arm. You've got to 60. Okay, seven will win it for you. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Phil's team. Sven, you're an Ericsson. Uh, Baldy, glasses, professor. Uh, Seaman yeah. dropper. Uh, studious. Uh, so I'll give you studious. Ikea yeah. face. Messiah. I'm going to give you Messiah as well. Oh, we'll move on to that softly spoken, mercenary philandering. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Nice uh, blow. Pitbull. <laughs> I'll give you Pitbull. Pitbull. If he's watching, so it's ear biting. I'll give you a point for that. Okay, Paul Gascoigne. Jordy Boozer. Boozer. Yeah, I'll give you Boozer. Boozer. Beer guzzling. I'm a fat fish, Jordy bastard. <laughs> genius. Genius. I'll give you genius. That's another so point. Well done. Okay. Glenn Hoddle. My head. I'm a boy. At the end of the show, David's team have 16 points, but this week's winner is Phil's team with 17. Yeah. Yeah. I said you couldn't be trapped in the right round. <laughs> so, thanks to David, Rory, and Neil, Phil, Jonathan, and Catherine. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Well done. A ghost story like you've never heard before, The Dark House is interactive and you can shape the outcome. Enter, if you dare, tonight at 11, over on Radio 4.